Now, when I see someone that is rambles on and on and on about things, goes off track, doesn't listen to what the teacher has been trying to tell them two or three times, that is a sign of a very wounded soul. People that ramble on, feel like they got to constantly explain themselves, go into long things, uh, go off the focus of the teaching. Maybe they go on other teachings and they, they start talking about things that has nothing to do with the teaching. They're using a thousand emojis, right? That is a sign of a very, very wounded soul, that you have wounds in your soul from your past, particularly trauma. I'm coaching you here, Mira. So if you feel like you've got to be like constantly writing people three-page letters to explain yourself, or you always feel like you need to be apologizing and, and getting your, yourself explained or validated or whatever, that's a sign of a very wounded soul, and it's time to stop, get focused with God, get your soul healed, stop trying to explain yourself to man, and start getting into that calm relationship with father and say holy spirit teach me how to focus i don't want to operate out of my trauma or my soul wounds anymore i want to get healed so i suggest miria that you go to my uh soul cleaning prayer and you start getting your soul healed right and you start and you start focusing and say father focus my direction focus my path so i don't feel like i've got to write long giant explanations right now if you like to write and you want to write about um your testimony you want to write about what god showed you that day start a blog start your own right but but you don't want to go on other people's pages and and overdo it because you're causing a distraction and that's a sign of a wounded soul and it can also be a sign of a python spirit that's attacking you where that python spirit is trying to keep you in its squeeze, keep you in its squeeze and making you think that you've got to be constantly explaining yourself to people. And to a point where it's overboard. And the python spirit causes a spirit of divination to come on a person and what's divination divination is someone who wants to distract from a teaching and the word of god and i don't want that for you darling so in the name of jesus christ of nazareth i speak to maria royale right now in the name of jesus and i break off break off break off that python i break off the spirit of divination i take the mighty and terrible sword of the sword of the spirit and i cut off and chop to pieces every single spirit of divination and python spirit that's squeezing her or causing her to be confused, causing her to, to, to want attention for the wrong reasons. We sever that python off of Miriam right now. We command that python to drop off her now in the name of Jesus. And we command that spirit of divination and that spirit that is not of God, the fear of man, to be loosed off her now on the cross and, and right to the cross of Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, to go to her, you to blow your breath, your wind into Maria right now. Pour an anointing into her, give her peace, heal her soul, that every soul wound in her is healed. We command the spirit of distraction and discord to be loosed off her now and under the blood of Jesus. And Holy Spirit, we ask you to go and fill those places in her and give her peace, give her shalom, give her shalem, give her direction, give her clarity right now in the name of Jesus. And that she knows that she receives attention by the light of Christ that is within her. Not, not by how many emojis she shares. We cancel those emojis off her right now in the name of Jesus. We say that Miria is healed. She is excellent of soul. She is healed of soul right now. All trauma healed off her now in the name of Jesus. And Father, if she likes to write, 
then give her a place to write and give her her, her writings, give her her book, give her her blog, and raise her up and teach her in her purpose. Holy Spirit, guide her with your breath, with your wind, and she will learn to be intentional with you, Lord. And let her see that you see her, Lord. That, that you see her, Father, and she doesn't have to keep trying to say, see me, see me, see me, because that is not of you, God. That she knows that as long as you see her, God, that she's good, that she's, she's okay, and you will bring the right attention to her, Father. We say that, Miria, today is the day of your deliverance. You are no longer slave to your past trauma. You are no longer slave to emojis. You are no longer slave to over-explaining yourself. And we break that spirit of rejection off of you, Mira, right now in the name of Jesus. And let the spirit of adoption come upon you. And you cry out, Abba, Father, because that's all the attention you need. And let his breath of life flow to you and through you intentionally in the name of Jesus. Now receive this today, Miriam, and listen to what I have to tell you. Get delivered of rejection. I have a prayer on my website. Okay? And we're going to give you a chance to come back on the Telegram chat. When my mods and I start seeing you doing better here on the Facebook, where you're, we, we think that you're being more focused, we start to see you getting delivered. And if you need prayer, if this is a struggle for you, and you need prayer, my team will pray over you today. So go to my website, AnnaMarieStrawHand.com, and put in a prayer request, and we'll pray for your deliverance. Now, you know, this is something a lot of people struggle with. They feel like they've got to constantly be explaining themselves to people. And that's a sign of trauma in, in soul wounds. And you're not going to grow that way. All right? And if you're constantly over-explaining yourself and you're using a thousand emojis and stuff and you're driving other people to distraction... Because you're like, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. That's not of God. That, that's, that's you coming from a wound of rejection, coming from a wound of trauma, and that's got to get healed. And like we taught you today that God is intentional. He's not like, ooh, no. You see, and you have, he wants you to be focused with him. And so if you find yourself having to over explain yourself all the time, and that's not of God. That's also fear of man because you're wanting man to validate you. Well, validate my feelings, validate my feelings, validate my feelings. That's not of God. You only need to be validated by one person, and that's Father God through Jesus Christ. That's it. And that can come from rejection. That can come from a, a lot of soul wounds. And it raises up anxiety when you got soul wounds, and you got soul wounds of rejection, and you got soul wounds of always having to explain yourself. Or, look, it's this person's fault. This is why I'm, oh, or this is why I'm this, or this is why I'm acting like, oh. It raises up that anxiety, and it gets you off the focus of what God is trying to teach you that day. And not only that, it causes everybody else to get distracted. Right? Now, I, I want you to stay on fire for Jesus. I want you to stay on fire for the Holy Spirit. I'm not trying to discourage you. I'm trying to encourage encourage you to grow and you said oh Anna Marie text me tell me what that I just told you and if you write letters here right 
you get a chance to be coached. Right now, I'm not doing any one-on-one sessions. I'm not texting people. I'm not. The Lord told me not to do that this year. So I'm being obedient. But you did the right thing by writing a letter, and here you go. I'm giving you. And this could be for a lot of you here today. The Python spirit can cause a lot of... Um, he can cause you to be distracted. Uh, how does the Python spirit get on you? From listening to the wrong teachers, listening to the wrong influences, having a fear of man instead of God. Uh, it sneaks in, it squeezes. It started with Eve. Did God really say? Did God really say? You know, and get your eyes off of the things of God and get you distracted. It, started with, it starts with you being distracted. And as soon as you get distracted, that Python spirit, he comes in. Very sneakily, he starts with flattery, and then he starts squeezing and squeezing and squeezing, and he gets you involved in, in uh, divisiveness, divination, uh, especially discord. Gets you in discord. And if he sees that you have a wounded soul that's not healed, and you're more focused on getting your validation and your approval from man instead of God, that opens up a big door to Python to mess with you. And so do my Python prayer, get delivered from that. Do my rejection prayer, get delivered from rejection. We're all on my website and get your soul cleaned up because if you're continually operating from your past rejections in your soul, if you're continually operating from those wounds of trauma in your soul, you see, and you might say, well, Anna Marie, you and your mods removed her from the telegram chat isn't that rejecting her no she got three warnings and i told her to stop doing it but i have to be a good leader to all my sheep i have to be a good shepherd to all my sheep he will say well what about going for the the one for the 99 well if the one is in my sheepfold and he's causing the more than the 99 to get confused and distracted, that's a wolf in sheep's clothing. And I can't let that sheep be in my sheepfold, causing distraction, causing others to get distracted, causing others to go astray. I have to remove that, that sheep that's causing confusion out of the sheepfold for a while, putting them into a different pasture until they can learn and get right before I let them back in with the other sheep again. Do you understand what I have to do as a leader? I have to do it for the greater good for all. But I'm glad she reached out to me. This is the first time I've had to do tough love with some of you who have been very distracting in our chats, and I've told you what to do. And yes, I go for the one. I, you know, I say, hey, listen. I say this with love, but before I let you back in the sheepfold, you got to get yourself right because you can't come in there and start causing all kinds of distractions. Listen, if that one sheep that left the sheepfold is covered in fleas and parasites of the enemy, am I going to let them back in the sheepfold so those parasites can jump on every other sheep? No, that would not be being a good shepherd. I'm going to say, okay, I'm moving you out of the sheepfold. You're going to go over here for a while. We're going to help you get delivered and cleaned up before you come back in there and jump, make all your fleas jump on it, right? I'm doing this with love with her. I have to be a good shepherd, my friends. Okay? And learn from me about leadership because... I have to do things that are really hard. They're, I'm not going to sit here and tickle your ears and be like, oh, la di da di da when I know you, you, got, you got a spirit on you and you need to get delivered. And I say it with love. John Thompson Ford, is the prayer for rejection the same or different than the prayer from cleansing soul and trauma rooms? The prayer for rejection is by itself. It's a prayer just to get delivered from rejection. 
And you should do it with the soul cleansing prayer too. I've got a prayer all by itself for rejection. As a matter of fact, my mods put it up here. There it is. Thank you, Goose. Prayer to be delivered and healed from rejection. Look, I I'm not here to be uh, miss uh, here. Everything's lollipops and, you know, I got to be, I'm a coach. I'm a mentor. And, and you know, I I'm doing it because I care about you. And if you're going to come in there to my sheepfold and be a distraction and potentially cause others to, to astray, I can't have that. And I'm glad that she reached out to me because now she can get delivered. Praise God. I got to see good fruit here, folks, in every single one of you. It's all about the fruit. You know, it's, it's tough being a leader, but I, I see churches ruined because of this. I see ministries ruined because of this. Why? Because they, they, they aren't tough on their leadership. Do you know my pastor, Pastor Chuck, down here at Oak Grove Baptist Church? The church secretary is not allowed to be a member of that church. The church secretary at, at the church that my, my husband and Mike, well, we used to go there. We do home church now. My pastor, Chuck, he's a, very, he's a man of great wisdom. Because you know what happened when he hired secretaries that were in that church and in that congregation? They caused discord. Caused a lot of problems. Yep. You know why? You know why? Because people were going up to the church secretary going, well, I don't like what this was going on in the church and I don't know what that was going on in the church and it caused gossiping it caused little cliques to form it, it caused uh the church secretary to get compromised because she felt like oh you know i guess i need to you know mm -mm. no nope. pastor shuck was like we're nipping that in the bud right now yep and ever since he's had a secretary that does not go to that church that doesn't want to get involved in any gossip or drama because he has those rules. And he caused that it would cause discord and stirring, and, right? Because one person can get into a sheepfold, start to cause distracted and discord, and try to draw all the other sheep over to it. People think it's, it's a um, Jezebel or whatever. No. It's classic Python. Can I get in there and cause a distraction and try to start getting people over here on my side and try to get people's eyes off the true leader, try to get people's off the true uh, plan, God's plan for that church, the true message. Let's, you know, try to get people to disrespect the pastor. That's Python. So it's sneaky and you got to take care of it quick. And good leaders take swift, decisive action. And I, I, do, I do give a warning. I do. But if you go into my chat and you're blatantly not following the rules and you keep doing it and you disrespect the leader, oh, bye. You know, there has to be good leadership and there has to be respect of the leadership. But if I'm here to teach you and I'm here to help you grow, I've got to make sure that you're not distracting everybody else and that you're staying focused too. So I say it with love. I say it with love. So there you go, Maria. Myra, how do you say your name? Myra? Miria Royale. Okay. 
So Maria, when you look in the mirror, you see the Christ that is within you. You see yourself as a child of God. That he is directing your steps. Okay? And it's time to get focused. All right? And, uh, you know, calm down. Okay? Now, you want to be a friend of mine? I just gave you the greatest thing any friend could ever give you. I gave you tough love. And I hope you receive it with love. And I hope you take it and you get, get delivered and, and you grow. Okay? All right, darling? That's right. That's right. Mary Swanson, a coach will bench a player that's not listening. Listen, I came from NASCAR racing. I came from NASCAR racing. And if you didn't listen to the crew chief, you could get hurt or killed. It's a very dangerous sport. Or you could hurt or kill somebody else out on that racetrack. And if you're going to be all distracted and you're not listening to your crew chief, Somebody's got to get hurt. We're not playing here. So I learned all those years that I was in NASCAR to be tough. And I listened to those crew chiefs. And I saw how they did it. And a driver that wasn't listening, you know what they do? Park it, driver. Park it. You know what park it means? Very rarely you'd hear a crew chief get on the radio and tell the driver to park it. it. Means bring that car in the garage, shut off the motor, park it, get out, and go to the hauler. You're done for the day. Because you're, you're like a dangerous weapon out there. You're going to get yourself hurt or somebody else. Well, I've had crew chiefs that have park people. Park drivers were like, oh boy, oh snap. Park it. So he doesn't just send him to the bench, he sends you to the garage. Park it. Until so you're going to listen. And who's your crew chief? The Holy Spirit. And he's not like a random wind blowing all over. No. He's intentional, focused, directing your path, growing you. Getting you in front of the right teachers, the right word of God for that moment. Giving you understanding of what season you're in. And not only that, what does the Holy Spirit do? He corrects you. He convicts you. And if you don't listen to him, and he's giving you nudge after nudge after nudge, what's going to happen? You're going to end up, the enemy's going to bite you. And he doesn't want that for you. Right? You're going to hit that wall. No, he doesn't want that for you. Neither do I. That's right, Duncan D. Tough love hurts, but it helps us grow. Amen. That's right. You know? And please, my moderators and I, we ask you kindly... Stop with all the emojis. They clutter up the chat. And, and we're trying to take people's questions. We're trying to pay attention to what people say. And all these emojis and all these things are nothing but clutter. Okay? So, so be short and sweet with what you want to say. Hand in your homework. 
and you will grow here. And Coach Gino and I and our moms will be able to answer you quickly and swiftly and get you to the next step. Especially on homework day. If I'm looking for you guys to hand in your homework and you've taken the time to do your homework and I've got somebody in there rambling <laughs> with 5,000 bazillion emojis and I'm missing people's homework. And people are like, Anna Marie, I handed in my homework. Didn't you see it? And I got to scroll up 900 feet. <laughs> That's not good fellowship with your brothers and sisters in Christ. No. <laughs> that's right, Jennifer. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. And that's all I'm saying to y'all. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. That's what a crew chief told me a couple times. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. That's right. And I'm not asking you to do anything that I haven't had to do myself. Okay. See, I used to have that fear of man and always have to explain myself and because I had soul wounds, right? And if I had an argument with somebody or I was trying to make my point or whatever, especially like say in the old days when I had a wounded soul, uh, when my husband and I would have an argument, I'd be like, he's going to hear me. He's going to agree with me. He's going to get my point. And literally, I would follow Mike in the bathroom. I would I'd be like talk, yelling at him through the bathroom door until I would try to pound him into a puddle. You're going to listen to me. You're going to hear my side of the story. You're going to hear, nah, 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 nah. you know, this happened because of this, 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 and this, and you, and this, and da, 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 da. And finally, he was just like, get out of my face. Now, this is how my husband does. This is how my husband be, because he's a Southern boy. He'd be like, I don't think so, Buck. <laughs> and I would just hound him. Like, you know, you don't understand. You know, if we have an argument about money and I have to explain why I spent that money or whatever. And, you know, and, and I was spending all that money because of my wounded soul trying to make myself feel better, right, instead of, Going to God. I mean, I had a lot of soul ones, and it's taken me years to get it healed. Get my rejection healed off of me. Get the python off of me. Get my soul healed. I'm not asking you to do anything that I haven't already done. My mom had to get her soul healed, too, because my mom used to be an over-explainer from her wounded soul. And it wasn't until she got her soul healed that my sisters and I finally had peace from all of her audiobooks that she used to leave on our phone machines. My mom used to leave audiobooks of me and my sisters, like on, on our voicemails. Right? Oh, what was it? And, then, and, and this happened. Oh, and you know, in 1975, I was this and this and this. And, you know, and I wasn't in a place where I could blah, blah, blah. And she'd be like going on and on and on. And we were busy moms and we were this. And finally, we're like, Mom, stop with the audiobooks. And it wasn't until I got my own soul healed that I realized my mom is operating out of, a, uh, out of wounds of rejection and her wounded soul. And so I said, Lord, help me help my mom get her soul healed. And I had to do tough love with her. And you've, you've seen her. She's been on my show. And she shared her testimony. She doesn't do audiobooks anymore. Short, sweet, to the point. She just shares scripture with me now. Tells me she loves me in the morning. Once in a while, she'll share me something from her, her book, God Calling. Oh, this is what the Lord said this morning. We don't have those long conversations where she feels like she's got to explain herself and her whole past. And this is why, this is this. Ooh. It was exhausting. And I realized I was doing that to my husband. And I'm like, enough. Why? Because you're trying to get that person to validate you instead of God. 
Agree with me, agree with me, agree with me. And it, it comes from a fear of man. And no. Or you want that person to realize that you have anxiety or you have issues or you have this because of all this stuff that happened in your life. Or it's because of what they did to you or because of... Stop it! Stop it right now! <laughs> You're operating out of a festering of your soul wounds. And you got to get healed. Because what you're going to do is you're going to drive those people away from you. And the exact opposite will happen. And you've got to give God your past. You've got to give him your hurts. You've got to give him your wounds. You've got to give him your rejection. And you got to loosen off you, off your soul, and all those memories of it. You got to take any blame and, and give it to God. And your fear of man. And you got to get that. And just say, I'm validated by God. I know who I am in Christ. That's all that matters. When you really enter God's rest is when you know God has got you. He sees you. He validates you. He's your Abba Father. You know the spirit of adoption has come on you from him, that you belong to him. You know, hypochondriacs act that way. Like Dr. Amy might know that from being a doctor. Hypochondriacs act that way. Well, oh, uh, you know, this happened, that happened because of this. Or that. I had a rash. I had a this. I had a this. Blah, blah, blah. You know, I had a, I had a, 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 a pimple. Uh, I had a pimple. I had a, well, whatever. You know, they, they use things, sicknesses and this and that as excuses. Uh, and they go on and on and on about it. Instead of being like solution oriented. You see, the Holy Spirit is solution oriented. He just doesn't randomly blow you with the wind. He's intentional, directional, and solution oriented. And the Holy Spirit's job is to keep your focus on God and God's word. And correct you. And guide you. He's not random at all. You see, that whole, I'm just blowing in the wind. Blowing in the wind. That's not true. Okay? What it is, is it gets you in the Jet stream. <laughs> Come on. Holy Spirit gets you in the jet stream. Come on. He wants to get you on his jet stream. And you get in that jet stream and you're going to accelerate because it's intentional and focused. And he wants to grow you in his word. He wants to grow you in relationship with Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was intentional every day, right? He woke up in the fourth watch, three in the morning. He says to his disciples, get in the boat. We're going to the other side. Whoa, 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 what are we doing? Whoa, right? Jesus was intentional. Why? Because he did what the Father told him to do every day, and that was intentional. He only had three years to fulfill a ministry. You've got to be intentional. And then you will accelerate, right? And you go from the scattered winds to the jet stream. But you got to have good coaches and mentors along the way. Come on.
Sally Dunn says, wonderful teaching for all of us. Thank you, Anna Marie. I'm learning so much from you. <laughs> well, you know, I had to learn this myself. Amen? Why did... Let, let's think about this for just a second. Why did Judas betray Jesus and Jesus let him go and didn't chase after him. Why is that one sheep that Jesus didn't chase after? What do you think? Because Judas was offended at Jesus. He was offended. If you read scripture and you read all the different things, all the different interactions between Jesus and Judas, Judas was constantly getting offended at what Jesus was doing because Ju Judas had the wrong focus. Judas had a focus that Jesus was to get them out of the rule of Rome. And when he started to realize that Jesus wasn't what he wanted him to be, he started getting offended. And what happens? That offense kept growing and growing and growing in, in Judas's soul. Judas got offended when Lazarus' sister used $20,000 of ointment on Jesus' feet. Wait a minute. That's, that's an expensive ointment. That could be used for the poor. Jesus said, leave her alone. She's blessing me, and she'll be remembered for this. You see, Judas kept getting offended. Instead of learning, Judas was supposed to be there to learn from Jesus. Judas was supposed to have a mindset change from Jesus, but he didn't want to learn. Instead, he was like, wait a minute, this Jesus, is he really who I want him to be? Well, he's not doing the things that I want him to do. Right? Judas was not teachable. Be teachable. And if, if, if a strong teacher corrects you, receive it. Because that's what Jesus did to Judas. He corrected him. But instead, Judas got offended. And that offense festered in him and festered in him. And, well, I'm not going to be told what to do. I'm not going to tell. And he ended up letting that offense get to him. And he betrayed Jesus. And Jesus, that's one of the sheep Jesus did not chase after because Judas was not teachable. A sheep hears my voice. Jesus was very specific on who his sheep are. What's the 99 for the one? that Jesus will go and chase after. The ones who want to hear his voice. The ones who are willing to what? Listen to him. And if you're not willing to listen to Jesus and listen to his teachers that he has appointed, you're not going to get chased after. You're not going to be one of the sheep. Right? There might be people that I've, we, that we've removed from our chat. There might be people that we've removed from the ministry. There might be people that I've asked to leave or whatever. And I don't chase after them. I let them go. Because they weren't teachable. I gave them chance after chance after chance to listen. But they didn't want to. Jesus gave Judas chance after chance after chance to listen. Instead, he got offended and wanted to do things his way. He didn't hear the shepherd's voice so that he wasn't a sheep. So if the shepherd doesn't go chasing after a certain sheep, don't say, well, he's not running after the one for the 99. He must not be like Christ. Well, what if that person really wasn't a sheep? They weren't teachable. They weren't listening to the shepherd's voice. Hmm? 
then they're not really a sheep that you should go after. And you got to learn as a leader and as a teacher to discern who's teachable and who isn't. I'm willing to go after a sheep and bring them back into the fold if they're teachable, if they're willing to get delivered, if they're willing to get those fleas off of them before they come back in. But if they're just going to get offended at me, there you go. They're not a sheep I should go after. I think Jesus made it pretty obvious, pretty simple. As a shepherd, what sheep you chase down? The ones who are willing to listen. My sheep, my sheep hear my voice. Those are the sheep. You see, we have to lead like Jesus leads. That's why I didn't chase after Judas. Now, Miria, she's a sheep. She wants to hear Jesus. She wants to learn. She wants to be let back in the fold. So today, I went, I went after her, and I said, okay, come on. Now, Mary, listen to what I'm telling you to do. Be teachable. All right? Then show us that you've learned. We'll happily let you back in, darling. You're here on Facebook still, but if you want to get back on that Telegram chat, let's show that you really learned, you really grew, you're really getting delivered, and you're doing these prayers that I've told you to do. All right, darling? God bless you. Are you guys understanding this? You guys understanding this? Yes, Pastor Amy. Pastor Amy. Oh, was that? Was okay. Amy, I just called Amy Pastor Amy. I meant to call her Dr. Amy. Is that was that something prophetic I just said, Pastor Amy? I think you're gonna have a ministry with your your new functional medicine practice. Yes, there's such a thing as an unteachable spirit. Yes. Yes. Exactly. That's right. you got to be able to receive correction instead of getting offended. I have to receive correction all the time from the Holy Spirit. And even from those who are my mentors. Lizelle Ornelas, I'm so glad I listened to you, Coach. I've been so blessed with your healing. Thank you, God. Amen. Yeah, now I had to say this to Lizella. I actually told Lizella uh, uh, to leave the Telegram chat for a while, that she was had this situation, that her soul was severely wounded with trauma, and she was always on there over-explaining herself and causing distraction. So I said the same thing to Lizella that I'm saying to Miria today. And Lizella went and got her soul healed. She did the work. She was teachable. And she got healed. She got healed from rejection. She got healed. Her, she got her soul healed. She got all that trauma healed. And now, she, now we saw that she was delivered. And we let her back in the Telegram chat. And now she's a blessing to everybody else there. And them to her. This is the first person I've done this with. And Lizella, thank you for being teachable, darling. Thank you for going and doing the prayers and the work and getting healed. And look how much better everything is for you and everybody else. She got delivered. That's right, Danny. Jesus got after Peter when Peter didn't want Jesus to go through his path with Father too, right? So... Jesus reprimanded Peter, okay, but Peter listened. Peter listened. Peter had a teachable spirit. Big difference. And you notice who Jesus said is the rock that he will build his church? The one who was teachable and didn't get offended. Peter. You see... 
I have this teaching, and I think I'll share it on my telegram here. Let's see if I can find it. I'm going to read it to you. You guys like it when I read this to you, read things to you, right? Okay, so hang on. Let me see if I can find this teaching. Uh, are you a Judas or are you a Peter? Let's see. All right, this is in my notes, and I'll share it. Leadership. You have to discern. And this is, this is uh, if you're a leader. If you're a leader, if you're running a business, a ministry, if you're in a church, if you're, you're, even if you run a home church. All of you have to understand this about leadership. I'm teaching you because some of you all will be leaders someday. Some of you already are. As a leader... But I love to train on leadership. You have to discern between a Judas or a Peter. Peter had a bad day. Judas had a bad heart. Peter, you restore. He will eagerly do the work as you mentor him. Judas will have a poor me attitude, make excuses, and question everything you are doing as a leader. A Judas will try to lead your flock against you while saying you're supposed to love me and tolerate me. Well, Jesus, Jesus didn't say he didn't love Judas but he wasn't going to tolerate him. He was just like, go, leave, go on, go do what you're going to do, and I'm not chasing after you. You release a Judas quickly. If you're not sure if they're a Peter or a Judas, ask God to expose their motives and swiftly remove them without having to confront them. Of course, you forgive as you release them to God. Harbor no offense. A good prayer to keep saying as a leader, Father God, only send people to me who you intend to grow Holy Spirit fruit for your glory and those you have assigned to me and me to them in Jesus' name. Again, let's say that together. Are you ready? You say that with me. Father God, only send people to me who you intend to grow Holy Spirit fruit for your glory and for those you have assigned to me and me to them in Jesus' name. You're not assigned to everyone, and everyone isn't assigned to you. Should we love everyone? Yeah. But are they for that time and season for you? Maybe not. Are you for that time and season for them? Maybe not. Maybe they need to be released quickly and swiftly. Are they teachable? Are they correctable? God looks at the heart, and so should we. Jesus said we will know them by their fruit. Fruit of the Holy Spirit. We can also revert back to Matthew chapter 3, verse 10. And we ask God to judge our relationships. And now, also, the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. The tree here is relationship. And it also can mean a person influencing in a situation. This is asking for the acts of God's judgment to come and remove any relationship or any influence around you in your business, your family, your ministry, and around your children. That God will move it swiftly if it's not there to bear good fruit. 
Ask for wisdom and discernment first and foremost in leadership. Good leaders take swift and decisive action. See what I said? Good leaders take swift and decisive action. So if God has discerned to you that someone is a Judas, that they're always offended, they don't respect your leadership, they're always trying to correct you, after you give them the warning after warning after warning, they're still doing it, they're causing others to go astray, they're causing confusion and discord, act swiftly and release them swiftly. Do it quickly. If you are listening to people that are around you that are just causing you more confusion, more discord. Get out of those situations swiftly. Close the door to those things and move on from them swiftly. Don't hang around or wait around. Because if you do that, Python comes in and he start, he's like, ooh, I've got some discord and confusion on them. Let me see if I can squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And if you allow yourself to get offended at a teacher that's corrected you, that python's going to snag you and grab you and squeeze you. You see what's happening in our country? People get offended at strong leadership. People that get offended at President Trump. Why? Because they get offended at strong leadership. And people that get offended at strong leadership they harbor that offense. And what happens? That python comes on them and squeezes them. And they start getting worse and worse and worse offended. And their lives start falling apart. It's not good. I'll put this teaching up on my uh, broadcast or up on my telegram. You know, because my job here is to take what I'm doing and multiply it onto all of you. You all need to go and be good leaders. You all need to go and be doing this. You all need to discern who you should have in your life and who you shouldn't. Some of you might say, well, Anna Marie, that's not loving your brother. It's not loving your brethren. That's not, well, if they're getting offended at me all the time, not respecting me, they're not acting like a brother or a sister, are they? I didn't say I didn't love them. But if they're taking me off my path with God or try to take others off the path of God because they're getting offended and they're trying to disrespect my leadership, causing others to get confused, the most loving thing I can do is tell them to leave and release them back to God for themselves and everybody else. I forgive them and I pray for them and I pray that they get the right mentor. Maybe I'm not the right mentor for them. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I'm not perfect and I'm not a perfect leader. Right? But I'm just trying to do the best I can because of my love for all of you. And a leader should first and foremost love the people they're leading and want to serve them. And I wouldn't be a good leader, a good shepherd, or a good servant if I see someone that is causing discord and confusion in my peeps. And I can't get to their homework, and I can't get to... And I, and I can't, it's causing me to get away from mentoring the, them. You see, people might say, oh, that's not very Christian. You correcting people or calling people out. Well, Jesus did. A lot. Do you guys remember when Jesus got mad at his disciples? Because they couldn't heal that boy with epilepsy and the father had to bring the boy to Jesus. Why? Because they weren't, they hadn't been listening to him. They hadn't been seeing how he was doing it. He kept telling them, I'm showing you how to do this. It has to be with belief. 
I'm showing you how to do this. I'm showing you how to do this on the authority of the kingdom. I'm showing you the kingdom. I'm showing you how to do this. But they weren't paying attention. And when that father had to bring his boy to Jesus because the disciples couldn't do it, Jesus got frustrated with his disciples and he reprimanded them and he corrected them. He said, what shall I do with you, this unfaithful generation? Because the father comes to Jesus and he says, well, if you can heal the, my, my boy. Jesus was like, if? If I can? If? If? Do you believe I can do it? See, their unbelief was affecting their faith and it was keeping them from doing what Jesus had been showing them to do. He was showing them how to do all this. And let me tell you something. That father said, help my unbelief. The father was willing to be corrected. And when the father was willing to be corrected, and he stopped and listened to Jesus and said, okay, okay. Help my unbelief. Help me. I want to be corrected. I want to learn. Help my unbelief. And as soon as he said, I want to be teachable, Jesus turned and healed his boy. Maybe some of us are praying for our children. And God is saying, do you believe I can heal your child? Do you believe I can do it? Jesus is saying, do you believe I can do it? Yes, Lord, help my unbelief. Anywhere where my faith is lacking, as soon as that father got teachable, his miracle happened. And Jesus let it rip to his disciples right in front of everybody. You haven't been teachable. You haven't been listening to me. I've been showing you how to do it. How you, when are you going to get it? I'm not going to be with you forever. You better get this. Because you're going to have to teach everybody else how to do it for generations. To correct people in a loving way. And, and Jesus was, he was pretty mad. If you go back to that scripture. But see, I got that way with Lizella. And now look at her. She became teachable. I had, to, I had to remove her from Telegram for a little bit. But look what God did in the process. She opened up her heart and became teachable. And she went and did the things I told her to do. And now look at her. Mark 9.23, and straight away the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. The minute that father got teachable, his child was healed and delivered. Wow. Come on. <laughs> 